see small practice as the lifeblood of architecture and also a lot of the innovators and, and we are keen to promote that. You see all those big practices well represented and you see their projects and all that kind of thing um, but to have um, peer and industry support for sole traders and practices of my size is, is really really great and it's really great to meet people in person and hear from their experiences as well. well as clients ourselves we really actively try and work with small practices. Um, we really go out of our way to try and seek out new talent and find ways of helping them through the uh, daunting bureaucratic process of public sector procurement for small practices who we do commission. It's often a big break for them. You know, it's a project that means a lot to them. Um, well, I think if you look across today's programme and tomorrow's programme, we have 60 uh, over 60 speakers, all leaders in their industry, whether that's clients, whether that's architects, whether that's project managers. Well, I think throughout the day um, there's been a real theme of um, small practices being able to be adaptable and fleet-footed and be able to bring something quite directly to the clients. And then you have things like the live pitch, which is like, like a change of format, but you know, great for the architects to see how um, clients really think about pitches and what they're looking for. Well, the live pitch is a short um, live event where the, uh, we get four participants, four intrepid architects prepared to get up on the stage and um, present, um, present to join a fictional framework panel. And so we thought really getting clients to be brutally honest and tell them what things are like from their perspective uh, would ultimately benefit the small practices themselves. Um, I think it was really good to get a range of responses from the different clients and also to learn from the other practices that we're pitching. Um, I think the overall message from the day has been that there's you know, the different aspects of each client type um, but what it comes down to in the end is that it's about the connection that you have. So whilst there might be specific kind of um, requirements for each one, it's, it's about how you present yourself and your connection with them. And it's in small architecture practices where the kind of intensity of engagement and where the kind of you see the whites of their eyes and you know you're getting a response that's emotional and personal to, to the kind of content we work with. And to be honest, as somebody working in a museum, we want that engagement. We want to see the love that we have for our objects and things and interiors and audiences reflected in architects. Mentoring is probably the, the best and the easiest way of helping other people build confidence to carry out their, their lives actually, whether it's personal or whether it's business or whether it's practice or just a future. Getting the client's perspective and finding about that side of a project, um, it's kind of complementing my current part three studies. Um, I had a lecture yesterday at Westminster talking about um, contracts and procurement routes and a lot of that came up in today. Um, client, the role of the architect with the client and kind of building relationships with the various consultants in a design team. So to me, I felt I learned a lot that, about that today. I was very struck by the great quality of advice that you get in a very short space of time. It's actually very focused and it's really nice to get different people's opinion that you wouldn't normally have access to and to ask some really fundamental questions of them and get some really great advice. The very first mentee that I met um, had a, quite a serious problem in that he had just lost everybody from his practice, either through retirement or going on to other jobs, and he was basically having to start from scratch. And what we talked about, I don't think it was advice, it was more kind of coming together towards a joint conclusion, was that he maybe could work with another similar practice with a similar ethos to do some kind of collaborative work or secondments so that he could start to build a bit of a team while he did his recruitment drive. Get a business plan, then get a business plan. Number three, get a business plan and then stick to it. And actually, if you want to get a good, good business plan, get yourself a good accountant. The advice I would give to any young architect is to take time. Uh, my twin brother's a lawyer. Lawyers get to be partners at 30. Architects hardly even qualify at 30. The best bit of advice I'd give to anybody as a mentor is take your time, be patient. You might not do your first decent building until you're 50, like Zaha. 
it's okay to scratch around, experiment, work for lots of different firms because it's a long process to get those skills together. So my advice is be patient. The opportunity with the mentoring is speaking with the clients. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to have that, to get their feedback, to get the other side's viewpoint and also um, to get the um, ex shared experiences from practices who've been there.